Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you today, and we're going to continue our study in Acts chapter 18. And we're going to pick up in verse 9. In verse 9, it says, One night the Lord spoke to Paul. Now remember, Paul is in uh, in Cor Corinth at this point. Um, he is um, preaching and teaching full time, and he is uh, sharing and this primarily with with the Gentiles at this point. And so he says, um, One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in the city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. So Paul stays in Corinth for a year and a half under a promise that God had made to him in a vision that no one was going to um, attack or harm him. And, and after that year and a half, something changes, something shifts. And, and um, in verse 12, it says, so keep in mind, that little section right there, that, that maybe two sentences right there, covers a year and a half's worth of time in uh, Paul's life in Corinth. In verse 12, it says, While Galileo was pro council at Achaia, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This man, they charged, is, is persecuting the people, uh, I'm sorry, is persuading the people to worship God in a way contrary to the law. Now, these are Jewish people that are coming against Paul. Remember, Paul is primarily teaching the Gentiles at this point. Um, but this is this is an interesting thing to me that this the sent you know the the paragraph just before said God said no one's going to attack you, and then in the very next paragraph it says they had they the, that the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul. Now, does this mean that God is uh, being contradicted, that his word is being contradicted here? I don't think so. What I think is happening here is that the promise of God was made for a very specific amount of time, and that's why in the end of that paragraph in verse 11, it tells exactly how long Paul stayed there in Corinth for a year and a half. And then the very next line, it says, now he is attacked, which means that that season of that promise is over, that that now there is a new thing happening here. And, and so in that little white space between verse 11 and verse 12, there's a year and a half of peace of, teach, of, of Paul teaching and leading uh, people to Christ. But now there is something that shifts and something that changes. And that's what I think sometimes we believers, we struggle with is the fact that God is always changing something, that He is ever moving and developing and changing and growing. And, and we have to be willing to move into that. You see, every promise that God makes for us is not for all of eternity. It might be for a season. It might be for that time and that place and that moment where we can live into it. But then at some point, God changes that and He, and he transforms, he, tr he, he makes that difference so that we can move forward. And so, um, it, what, what happens here is, is very interesting, though. He's being charged with persuading the people to worship a God in a, in a way that is contrary to the law. What law? These are Jewish people that are talking, and, and he's persuading them to worship God in a way that is contrary to the Jewish law. The problem is they're coming to a Greek ruler, right? <laughs> to uh, Galileo, who is the pro council of Achaia, he, he's a Roman official or a, a Greek official um, in this case. And he's saying, um, just as Paul, he's a Roman official, I should correct myself, just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to them, if you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names of, and, and your own law, settle the matter, the matter yourself. It will not be um, 
I will not be a judge of such things. So he drove them off. Then the crowd, um, then the, the crowd there turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue ruler, and beat him in front of the proconsul. And Galileo showed no concern whatsoever. <laughs> this is very interesting. Again, that the people brought Paul in to see this proconsul, this Roman proconsul. Um, authority, and apparently the synagogue leader, Sosthenes, uh, was with them, and he was uh, maybe leading the charge, leading the situation, and when uh, the proconsul said, I'm not going to listen to this, I'm not going to hear this, he turns them away, and the people turn on their own leader, on their own synagogue leader, and they beat him right there in front of the proconsul, and, and, and it just... It just goes to it just shows me how how um, unstable mob mentality can be when we can turn on our leaders so fast when we can turn on the people that were once having great influence on us leading us in a direction helping us to go somewhere and the moment that there is opposition and the moment that there is a, a seeming obstacle in the way um, the mob will turn on that leader and that's a dangerous place to live from that's a dangerous place to be and, and so i think it, it as christians it should bring us back to the idea that we are following christ that we are following god and god will set up leaders he will establish leaders um, in our lives to follow and we follow those leaders, as Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. We will follow those leaders in, uh, in so much as they are following the ways of God, that they are, uh, that they are honoring God in their, in their direction, in their leadership. And, and when they are, then we should stick behind them. When they are not, then we have to reevaluate. Um, and, and the other side of that coin is, though, that even to follow a leader, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to pray for that leader. We have a responsibility to hold that leader up before the Lord and to pray for them to have wisdom and to have guidance and to have courage from the Lord, to have insight from God, to know the direction to lead, to, to know the right way to lead. And, and, and if we will fulfill that, then I believe God will fulfill his side of the coin because the Apostle Paul will write that all leaders are established by God, but all leaders don't necessarily follow the will of God. And so we have to be wise and discerning in that. But mob mentality never works. God establishes through leaders and he, and he accomplishes his will through leaders who are following his will. So pray for you leaders. I want to pray for you into that today and just ask that God would lead us and guide us in understanding this. Lord, we thank you for just the opportunity to know you and to be led by you and to trust you and to have leaders who are led by you. And we just lift up our leaders, our government leaders, our church leaders, our community leaders, everyone who has influence. Lord, we pray that you would give them wisdom and guidance and direction from on high and not to and protect them lord from the, from the the message of the of this world the message of the principalities and powers of this world so that they are not led astray but so that they can lead in the way that you have established and we trust in you completely for that in jesus name amen amen thanks for being with me everybody have a great day